That'll wake everybody up. Hello. Hello, everyone. Welcome to this very special 14th of February. I, I, I have avoided saying the actual name of the day, uh, and I, don't, I, you know, I intend to keep avoiding saying the actual name of the day. It is a day that has given me an excuse to have a little concert. It's been six weeks since the last one, plus minus, so I'm very happy that I've been allowed to play tonight. Uh, my good wife, Kirsten, is here on the controls. Say hello. Hello. There we go. I was and distracted. She was distracted. She is watching the chat. She is drinking wine. And uh, I, of course, don't believe in this day at all, other than for uh, using it as an excuse to have a sing-song. But I did. Um, oh, you've moved them. I got her. A, I got her some flowers today that she's taken off the set. The audio is too low. Please turn up your audio, everybody. Uh, once the songs get going, I suspect it'll get a little louder. We'll just do a couple of chords and see how they sound. One, two. Okay, right, well, I think we'll get right to it and then we can talk about some other things and about our songs. This first song is a song by a chap called Stephen Merritt who belonged to a band called the uh, Magnetic Fields. I only learned that today. I should have learned that a while back, but I've only just learned it. It was made famous largely by Peter Gabriel and it's called The Book of Love. And... I really like it because there's, it's beautiful and I love the way Peter Gabriel sings but also there's a bit in it that says you can sing me anything or I love the... Uh, how do the words go? Uh, wait one second. <laughs> I love it when you sing to me and you can sing me anything. Now that is particularly poignant for me because my dear wife doesn't well, thinks she can't sing but in actual fact she has quite a fine singing voice I think. I, there's no way she will ever sing live, or in fact not, not live, not even recorded will she sing. But um, I really love it when she sings, especially when it's to me. She's not paying any attention whatsoever. Uh, hopefully later on I will be rewarded with a kiss on the cheek for paying her such a wonderful compliment. Okay, let's play some music. Here we go. The Book of Love. for dancing but I I love it when you read to me and you you can read me anything the book of love has music in it in fact that's where music comes from and some of it's just transcendental and some of it's just really dumb but i i love it when you sing to me and you You can sing me anything The 
the book of love is a long and boring and written very long ago it's full of flowers and heart-shaped boxes and the things we're all too young to know but i to give me wedding rings Thank you very much. Is the sound okay? It is, some people are happy with that. Some people are happy with it. Others not. 80%. I'll turn it up a little. I'll do it here. Okay, let's see if that makes a bit of a difference. Right, so that's a very beautiful little song. Uh, you won't see too many hearts around here today. Uh, those are all the actions of my wife. I wasn't going to have any hearts at all, but Kirsten likes the odd heart. And so I know for many people, this day is a day of, sometimes it's painful. Maybe you've had a breakup. Maybe you've had a divorce. Maybe you've just lost a loved one with whom you used to celebrate this day. And so for if you are one of those people, I hope that you'll take this in the spirit in which it's intended. And that is that it's just a celebration of good love songs, and in fact, the solidarity of being together online in these trying times. And so that's what we're dedicating it to this evening. I'm now going to pour myself a drink. It's there in front. This one? What is that? No, not that one. No. That one I've put in a fancy decanter, but it is the cheapest whiskey we have. No, oh, it looks very fancy, uh, but it isn't. It's fairly foul. I have poured myself an apple juice uh, given to me by my father-in-law on the occasion of my 44th birthday. Cheers, everybody. Happy day, whatever you might like to refer to it as. Right, the next song. Are there any questions that you would like to ask? You've lost them. Save them for the next time. Okay. The next song, um, you all know, uh, in fact, the rest of the songs I have sung before, bar uh, the Book of Love, obviously. The next one is Romeo and Juliet by Dire Straits, or written by Mark Knopfler, or Knopfler, I never know how to say it. And, in fact, it was written about a woman called Holly Vincent. Uh, I've never heard of her before. Holly Vincent apparently uh, was a failed love affair for Mr. Knopfler, who's still going at the ripe old age of 72 this year, I think he is, or 71, 72 this year. And uh, Holly Vincent obviously was from some 40-odd years ago, and she apparently... Uh, attached herself to him briefly in order to lift her own career. 
I don't think it worked too well because I'm not entirely sure that anyone remembers her. I certainly have never heard of her. But I do come from the southern parts of Africa where our exposure to music other than from our own country is fairly limited. I do think, though, however, that this is one of the most beautiful songs. And so here it is. It's not a happy love song. It's a sad love song, but it is lovely. And the introduction is an instrumental which is taken largely from Bill Whelan's River Dance, believe it or not. I'm not sure why I put the two together, but there it is. I didn't put the new battery in. We've still got sound. Okay, we've still got sound. Stand by, everybody. Kirsten, sing to them. Sing. Do you want me to get the battery? battery? I'll get it. I'll get it. Talk to to the people. I'm sorry that James won't plug Debbie get it. He can't. I'll make a deal. We have a, a moment. Come back on ODS. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for the crackling, everybody. I apologize. I apologize. There we go. We're back. Um, what an absolute imbecile. Uh, I do apologize profusely. That's very unprofessional. I charged the battery, and then I didn't put it in the camera. I was just so excited. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Romeo and Juliet. Stalker Romeo, sing the streets a serenade, laying everybody low with a love song that he made. He finds it convenient, 
Steps out of the shade Says someone like You and me, babe How about it? Julia says Hey, it's Romeo You nearly gave me a heart attack She's underneath the window She's singing Hello, my boyfriend's back Shouldn't come round here Singing of the people like that Anyways, what you gonna do about it? Juliet, the dice was loaded from the start And I forget when you exploded in my heart And I forget, I forget, you know the movie song So when you're gonna realize it was just that the time was wrong Juliet streets of shame both dirty both mean and the dream was just the same I dreamed a dream for you so now your dream is a real how can you look at me as if I'm just another one of your deals when well, you can fall for chains of silver you can fall for chains of gold you can fall for pretty strangers and the promises they've told me everything yeah you promised me thick and thin now you just say yo Romeo yeah you know I used to have a scene with him the Juliet when we made love he used to cry he said I love you like the stars above I love you till I die and there's a place for us you know the movie song so when you're gonna realize it was just Talking on the TV, and I can do a love song like a way it's meant to be. I can do everything, but I'll do anything for you. Can do anything to be in love with you. And all I do is miss you, and the way it used to be. And all I do is keep the beat. And the rock and roll company And all I do is kiss you Through the bars of a rhyme Julie, I do the stars with you Anytime, Juliet When we made love, you used to cry You said I love you like the stars above I love you until I die And there's a place for us You know the movie song so when you're gonna realize it was just that the time was wrong, Juliet. Thank you so much. Oh, so nice. It is such a lovely song, isn't it? Beautiful. Right. Everyone is saying they love that, and it's such a beautiful song. I always feel like it should be a happy song, and I've been asked to play it at a number of weddings by people who clearly haven't listened to the lyrics but have enjoyed the song and probably, you know, danced around the dance floor not listening to the lyrics with the object of their affection. And I have sung it at a few weddings, but I have warned them beforehand that, you know, it's not really a very happy song, but normally they don't mind. So yes, please go Stuck ahead. In bed says, Any tips for learning the guitar? Stuck in bed, tips for learning the guitar. Uh, there is one tip, and that's to practice, really. It's, it's actually not a very difficult instrument to learn to play, basically. It's not like 
the bagpipes, for example, to learn to play the bagpipes uh, to a level that anybody would actually want to listen to you, you've got to be pretty proficient. Likewise, a violin. Listening to somebody learning to play a violin is really like living or being in the proximity of a cat abattoir, if there is such a thing. But that's what it sounds like when somebody's trying to learn to play the violin. But the guitar is really not like that. And if you want to learn to play the guitar, you can learn a couple of chords in a day or two, and you can already play songs. So to master it is just as difficult as it is to master any other instrument, I think. But to learn to play it basically, it's a pretty simple instrument to learn. So it's just time on the instrument, basically. So practice, you know, that's all it is. Yes. Any blues songs? Yes, Teresa, I do. And I'll be giving you one shortly. <laughs> Anything else? Um. No. Right, okay. Next one is a blues song. Oh, wait, we have one. Oh, we do. One Zoe. Yes. You could put, um, okay, so the difference between a nylon and a steel string guitar is that obviously the tension in a steel string is much more or much greater than it is in a nylon string. So you could, in theory, put a nylon set of strings on this guitar, this is a steel string, and it would probably be okay. You'd have to change the action, so you'd have to lift it up slightly, which means that you'd have to move the strings slightly away from the fretboard because nylon strings are thicker. Uh, but in theory, you could do it. You can't do it the other way around, though. If you put a steel set of strings on a nylon guitar, uh, you will most likely cause it to break in half uh, because the, it just doesn't have the strength. And, I mean, this one's got a truss rod in it, so there's a steel rod that runs through the fingerboard. The old ones don't have that, but um, the new ones do. Yes? Anything further? Um, Christine yes? Christine Brackett of Christine and Katie. Oh, North Carolina? Yeah. Oh. Hi, Chris. Oh, I'm I am drinking a special edition Shivers Regal, courtesy of my father-in-law, who has a very fine cellar of wine and whiskey. He doesn't drink the whiskey much, though, so when I go down there, I try and make a dent on it. Right, this one comes from 1957, written by Bo Diddley, covered by Eric Clapton many times. He's played it. He's basically made it famous or kept it alive, probably. And Creedence Clearwater Revival did a version, and no doubt thousands of pub singers like myself have done uh, various versions of it. It's called Before You Accuse Me, and it is about that eternal love song generator. And that eternal love song generator is women's inhumanity to man. There are many, many songs written about that. Uh, justified or not, it's not really relevant. It's just the subject about which many love songs are written. Here we go. Before you accuse me, take a look at yourself. Excuse me, take a look at yourself. You say I'm spending my money on other women, you're taking money from someone else. I called your mama about three or four nights ago. Three or four nights ago Your mama said, son, don't call my daughter no more Oh, you accuse me Take a look at yourself Oh, before you accuse me Take a look at yourself Say I'm spending my money on other women Oh, you taking money from someone else
one more time No things don't go to suit you Well I guess I lose my mind Before you accuse me Take a look at yourself other women oh you taking money from someone else Excuse me, take a look at yourself. Oh, before you accuse me, take a look at yourself. You say I'm spending my money on other women. You are taking money from someone else. Thank you so much. Thank you. Did you like it? It was quite bluesy, wasn't it? Yes. I will drink more apple juice. Yes. Yes. Yes, I'm ready. Yes, I think an older person can learn to play the guitar or a beard. I think that you are a long way, um, you're a long way from past it, having met you. So yes, I think you could absolutely learn to play a guitar. There's no reason why you shouldn't. And so I suggest you go out tomorrow with a mask and buy one. And or get one out of the attic. It horrifies me to think how many valuable guitars there are sitting in attics around the world. Uh, you might have one with you, our beard, but yes, I absolutely think you can learn to play the guitar at any age. I really don't think to play it basically is that difficult. Right. Darcy Ann said, how many things did you bring back to your father-in-law broken this time? Oh, Darcy Ann, uh, my recent, most recent camping trip, I didn't bring anything broken back to my father-in-law. Uh, his daughter was in one piece, and that was the only belonging of his that I took with me. Uh, so no, nothing was broken, mainly because we only mm. we didn't take anything of his. We took a lens of his, which uh, you're currently looking at me through right now. So that one is still in pe intact. Yeah. yeah. And Good question. I am constantly astounded that my father-in-law hasn't punched me in the face a few times because really I have done some serious damage to his uh, to his caravan, his camping trailer, camping trailer, I suppose what it's called. Uh, but each time he's just amazingly generous and uh, magnanimous about the whole thing. I mean, look, I don't think that'll last forever, so I need to try and lessen the damage that I do to his camping trailer. Right. Yes? Oh, White Lady Irwin, I can find my way around the piano. To say that I could play it would be a gross over um, statement of my talents. No, I, I mean, I can find my way around a piano, but I can't really play it, no. My sister's a very good pianist. Now, the next one is this also sort of a bluesy type of a song. 
This one is Layla, which was written by, I just need to check the name of the second writer. It was Eric Clapton and Jim Gordon, I think it was. Yes, Jim Gordon. And it was inspired, apparently, by a book given to him. I forget who gave it to him, but it's a 12th century Arabic poem that tells of an Layla, this Arabic woman, who didn't requite the love of her suitor. And Eric Clapton was inspired by this uh, and s sang it largely about Patty Boyd, who was his friend, George Harrison's wife. And this was before he actually managed to break up that marriage and marry her himself. I think, they, I think when George Harrison died, they had actually let bygones be gi bygones, and I think they were friends. But uh, it's about Patty Boyd and Layla, the uh, 12th century poem. Uh, written about a 7th century woman called Layla, somewhere in Persia or the Arabian Peninsula. And we'll do the unplugged version. We won't do the... Because I've forgotten the other one. There we go. Okay, we'll do the unplugged version. Here we go. Are you ready?
clapped just the right time. Oh, good. What a relief. There was dancing. Oh, good. I saw you were giving a bit of a swing there. It was quite nice. It inspired me. Yes, exactly. There were imaginary tambourines. Cheers. Yes, let me, while I find the words for the next one. Uh, our Laura Moore, learning to read music is tricky, uh, but in the same way that learning to read or write anything, uh, if you've never done it before, is tricky. It's a language, but it's a language of only 12 notes, as opposed to, say, 26 letters. And so it's not impossible at all. It just, you know, I suppose it's visually... If you look at the score of a symphony, for example... Uh, if you took the score of Beethoven's Ninth and you had never read music before, uh, it would look so intimidating that you'd probably burn it before anybody could ask you to do anything else with it. But it's just a language. Um, it's a, it gets progressively harder. The more complicated the music gets, the language gets more difficult, but it's doable. So if you had to learn a language you'd never learned before, You'd start off with, hello, how are you, what's your name, etc., and eventually you'd progress to translating Shakespeare. And that's just what music is. And you can learn to read it as, a, as an older person as well. There's no reason you shouldn't. You don't, you know, I mean, I always advised my students back in the days when I was a teacher <laughs> uh, to learn to read music, but a lot of guitar players can't read music. A lot of the great guitar players can't read music. Uh, David Gilmour can't read music or couldn't read music until a few years ago when he learned to play the saxophone. Um, you know, so Clapton can't read yeah, Clapton can't read music. A lot of the great guitarists, I mean, I doubt Bo Diddley, you know, these great blues guitarists couldn't read music. And so it's not essential to be able to read music to make music. It's helpful if you want to compose it, but it's not necessary. It's helpful if you want to play other people's music. But there are ways around it. You can do it by ear, uh, guitar. You can do it with just a chord chart sometimes or a tablature, which is a bit easier to read than music. So you don't have to learn to read music, but it's, I mean, I, mean, I find it quite helpful. I'm glad I did learn, but it's certainly, it, it's not a barrier to learning to make music at all. Um, Cheryl, uh, donor or charity guitar programs for teens and children? There are. I don't know of any. It's, uh, it's been a while since I was kind of in it. But yes, there are. I mean, I know the guy who used to fix the gu my guitars um, and who I bought all my guitars from used to have a thing once a year where people were bringing their old guitars. He'd see them donated to music schools. There are lots of music programs in the poorer areas of this country, especially within the cities because music is just so valuable for youth. You know, if you can't come home from school, you've got nothing to do, uh, music or sport, those two things are just so valuable for young people uh, when they're playing in teams or playing in groups, sports or music, and there are a lot of people that do a lot of work in those fields in South Africa. Could be done, could be more, but yeah, there are a lot of people that do that. Okay, let's have a song. Right, the next song... I've sung for you before. I may have sung it twice. I think I've only done it once. So. This was um, our little wedding song that I sang to my wife at the end of my speech. Uh, it is from Shakespeare's Sonnet 18. 
And the music was written by a chap called Michael Carmen, who was a relatively famous composer. He died uh, just before the album on which it appeared came out. And Michael Carmen got David Gilmour to sing it, and I just think it's absolutely magnificent. Shakespeare obviously was a wordsmith par excellence. Uh, if it was only one man, I, I don't know what we're on his, history-wise, if people have decided he did exist or he didn't. But this particular sonnet comes from a cycle of sonnets, the name of which escapes me, so I wrote it down. It's called the Fair Youth Sequence, 126 sonnets, and this is the 18th. And he wrote it about a young man, and I modified it slightly because I married a woman, and so we'll sing it as its original form, I think, today, because that's how Shakespeare wrote it. And here it goes. Shall I compare thee to a summer's day? Thank you very much. I had intended uh, before my wedding to write a song, and um, you know, when guys like Shakespeare have done it already, and so eloquently and magnificently, uh, well, it's a shame to waste their skills. So I did this one instead. Right, now the encore, which has become just part of the show. Yeah, we can have questions. We can do the last few questions. We've got one from everybody asking a question. Yes. When will you be back at Wild Earth? Oh, um, I s unlikely I will be back at Wild Earth. Um, I'm working currently as the editor of Africa Geographic uh, magazine. It's a permanent job. Um, so it's unlikely I'll be back at Wild Earth any time soon. Maybe one day I'll do a guest drive or two. Who knows? Uh, was the best job I ever had, of course. Uh, but now I've got a very challenging and very inspiring job at Africa Geographic, uh, covering conservation stories, travel around Africa, and a nice new team of people, and it's really great. And I'm working with Jamie, of course, who many of you know, and it's a great privilege working with her again, I must say. 
Yes, and we will be doing lots of lives, of course, and um, my wife is frantically editing a number of series, two series, uh, one in Tlitluwe Mfolozi, which we did with Wildlife Act, a wonderful uh, wildlife NGO. I know a no number of you were asking this week um, if there were any NGOs doing work in human-wildlife conflict. They actually do do work in human-wildlife conflict and specifically leopard human-wildlife conflict, so check them out. Wildlife Act, you just Google that, you'll find them. Um, and then she's editing a series on our trip to Botswana, which we did with a wonderful little company called Chobi 4x4, and we had, <laughs> we had an amazing time during the wettest season the north of Botswana has seen for goodness knows how long. Uh, magnificent equipment that we were lent. <laughs> we didn't break, did we break anything? I think the only thing I managed to break or semi-break was the Bialetti uh, espresso maker, yeah. which I put on a flame too hot and it kind of melted half the handle, but that's the only thing we managed to break. And it's a, I mean, it's a huge Toyota Land Cruiser we drove around and they're nigh on impossible to break. So that's coming out. Everyone listening, congratulations on your uh, job. Thank you very much. Congratulating me on my wild my job at Africa Geographic. I miss you too. Those of you who miss me on Wild Earth, I miss you too. Mm -hmm. But we'll be in touch, and we are going to do a couple of lives before we do the uh, broadcast the the series, and uh, you'll also be able to see Kirsten. She will be making an appearance and answering questions. She may even speak. It's going to be very scary. It's going to be very scary, she um, says. And Oh yes, we're going to do this once a month, and we're going to do it uh, a theme. So this, well, it's obvious what this one's theme was. You can tell by the hearts behind me. And we'll have some kind of theme going, and we'll do it once a month. Give me some time to learn some new songs, hopefully write a few new songs, and that'll be the vibe. Okay, so you will see me, and hopefully read me. And yes, I'd love to hear from you all the time. So please do keep communicating, and yeah, get in touch. Okay, right, the final song, I've sung for you twice before, but I've rearranged it with some strings this time, and it's my song called Moonlit Valley, and it was all about that first time that wilderness touched my inner being, although I didn't know that's what it was. As I always like to say, I was looking down the valley over in the Drakensberg, and I remember very clearly the sound of the silence, the taste of the dust, and the way the wind made the long thatching grass move. It was just a very special time. And sat in my head for at least 10 years before the song came out. Now with strings. I hope it doesn't get too loud. It should be all right. I'll turn it a little bit down here. Okay, here we go. <laughs> All the way to her thighs She had a certain confidence A look that held a man's gaze She walked up to the counter Where I was standing She whispered in my face She said in the And she talked to me about life like it's a riddle I sang a song I thought she'd like But she started talking in the middle 
She said I looked like I was hiding and I told her, you know, you remind me of the sea. She danced in a flowing skirt, the colors of the joker I dreamed of them. Thank you, everybody. We can take a few questions, I suppose, if there are any. Otherwise, we'll see you when we see you in a month, I guess, for this sort of thing. I'm not sure when are we going to do our... We don't know when we're going to do our first live for the other ones, but we'll let you know. All right. Thank you, everybody. It's been wonderful. Have a happy day, evening, morning, wherever you are in the world. I hope that you will find something to lavish your love on and that something or someone will lavish love upon you. And if they don't, well, you can have love from me and from Kirsten. Bye-bye.